Hello and welcome once again everyone. Today I'd like to share with you my thoughts on how to play the Tier 10 British Destroyer, the HMS Daring. I have had a lot of fun with the Royal Navy DD line. I felt each ship in the line brought its own unique set of challenges and the Daring is no different. For those of you new to my channel, let me quickly lay out my plan for this video. As usual, I'll go through some of the ship's key stats, how to set up the ship's upgrades, including the captain's commander skills, followed by full highlights of a closely fought match, where I'll try and help you identify some of the daring's strengths and weaknesses, to enable you to adapt your gameplay while sharing my strategy to hopefully help you increase your own effectiveness on how to better play the HMS Daring, which is, in my humble opinion, one of the most difficult destroyers to master in World of Warships. I chose this opening clip as it encapsulates the pure destructive power of the Daring, combining stealthy torps with powerful AP armament where it dishes out a massive 100,000 damage in just 90 seconds. So, moving on, let's take a closer look at the HMS Daring. The keen of eye among you will quickly notice the Daring sits much higher in the water compared to its Tier 9 predecessor, the HMS Jutland. Unless you have used free experience to train all the way directly here, you should immediately recognize the main battery gun caliber is 113 millimeters, the exact same guns as the HMS Jutland. Similar to my Jutland video, I will quickly address the most contentious issue with this gun caliber. We can clearly see the armor penetration capability of its high explosive shells is 18 millimeters. While we take a closer look at the armour layout to get a typical feel for how virtually all higher tier destroyers look in terms of armour protection to understand why 113mm armament is ineffective and how we can compensate. As we quickly scroll over different sections of the ship we can see the armour values being typically 19mm excluding the turrets and superstructure, meaning our 18 millimeters of high explosive penetration is unable to overmatch the 19 millimeters of armor, resulting in shattered shells and no high explosive penetration damage. The solution is the level 4 captain skill called Inertia Fuse for High Explosive Shells, better known as IFAG, which will increase the penetration power of high explosive shells for gun calibers under 139 millimeters by 30 percent. So let's reassign our commander with this skill trained to see the updated values and we can clearly see our high explosive armor penetration capability has increased to 24 per millimeters allowing us to overmatch penetrate and now do high explosive damage. So, moving on from there, let's take a look at how we set up our ship. And firstly, we'll take a look at the consumables, or premium consumables, and the upgrades. Firstly, main armaments mod 1, damage control system mod 1, aiming systems mod 1, steering gears mod 2, concealment system mod 1, and main battery modification 3. Let's go to the captain skills. Priority target. Preventive maintenance. Last stand. Survivability expert. Concealment expert. Radio location and inertia fuse for high, high explosive shells. Gives us a survivability of 24,300. Let's take a look at these main guns. Main battery. 
two dual 113 millimeter turrets, two in the front, one in the back, all capable of rotating 360 degrees with a very fast reload speed of 2.2 seconds. We get two X5 torpedo launchers, 10 kilometers of range, slightly increased damage on the Jutlands torpedoes, but virtually the same. 43 rating of AA defense. Maneuverability. In comparison to the Jutland, we get an increased speed of 1 knot to 35, but also an in increased turning circle and a slower rudder shift time. And one of the biggest features, or drawbacks I would say in this case, is an increased detection range to 6 kilometers in comparison to the Jutland 5.7. I'm uploading World of Warships content regularly now to YouTube, so if you want to keep in touch, just follow the on-screen instructions. The Royal Navy in World of Warships finds its ranks boosted with the addition of HMS Daring at Tier 10. And so far, for me personally, it's proved itself to be a real challenge. While not quite fully being finished article yet, as HMS Daring has not yet received a legendary upgrade like its other tier 10 compatriots, the only other exception being the IGN gunboat Haragumo. I'd like to see a little flexibility added in some shape or form, maybe something similar to the Gearing's legendary module, which decreases its detection range while increasing reload speed. What do you think? Let me know in the comments what you'd like to see happen with this legendary upgrade. That being said, I find the daring quite restrictive in its current iteration for quite a number of reasons. Primarily, its concealment, even with a full stealth build, comes in at 6 kilometers, resulting in the fact you will be outspotted by virtually every enemy destroyer you will encounter while playing top tiers barring the Russian gunboat Khabarovsk. Secondly, combine this with the fact that the daring sits really high in the water, similar to the gearing, means you are incredibly easy to hit. I've taken 8 to 10k volleys from Zhao's, for example. Finally, to round off the rule of three, the daring feels naturally sluggish. When retreating, you will not outrun any determined pursuer, nor will you be capable of chasing down any target intent on escape. Identifying and understanding these weaknesses is key to developing strategy and sound tactics to counteract enemy destroyers and impose the daring's strengths on the battlefield. This is why I consider RPF or radio location along with IFHE, mandatory skills on the daring. Interpreting your RPF indicator to understand enemy movements will enable you to make informed decisions when to attack or retreat. Simply using my RPF indicator and the fact that the cap process is blocked, I can tell there is an unidentified destroyer in the cap, seemingly slowly skirting the edge moving from right to left, so I have torped into an area where I expect him to continue sailing. Those two sets of five torpedoes tell me that I'm up against a gearing. Just going to slowly reverse down here, and yes, we get a torpid on the gearing, so we know ex his exact location. Even though my RPF is slightly... Okay, now it's readjusted, so we know he's right there on the edge of the cap. He's taken almost 10,000 in damage, and he's just left the cap zone. So I'm just going to reverse down here, using the cap zone now as an extension of my detection range. You can see the broken line of my detection range on the minimap, and I can just use the white circle 
of the cap zone to extend my detection range or uh, early warning system so to speak enemy to mine is camped back quite far at the rear I'm just going to stay calm and continue capping okay enemy gearing has re-entered the cap and he's moving from left to right so this is the moment to strike enemy radar is out of range and there's the enemy gearing let's open up fire slow down get ready to smoke up continue to angle in and put fire on this gearing just change to only use my front guns I'm angling in like this to mitigate as much incoming damage as possible. And the gearing goes down. Just gonna keep moving because there is a lot of fire coming in from the rear. And you can see I have taken almost 9,000 damage in a very, very short encounter. The term glass cannon is really applicable to the daring. And while the self-heal isn't exactly overpowered, you will need to squeeze every drop of HP you can get out of it to avoid being crippled after any early game engagements, ensuring you remain a viable threat to the enemy for the remainder of the contest. In pure 1v1 contests, the daring is incredibly strong, but finding that one target before isolating and eliminating him without taking massive damage from their supporting fleet remains a continuous challenge. The key is patience. Avoid rushing to cap and to do damage, but learn to pick your moments with precision. In the meanwhile, enemy Haragumo has been detonated by our turpets, so I'm spared that nasty encounter, which leaves me as the only destroyer alive in the game. This is what we call prime real estate. Enemy destroyers have been removed and I'm free to go to work on the enemy fleet. I feel the need to prioritize playing the objective which is capturing the B cap and as I can see the main fleet is already retreating away. So the chances of landing any torpedoes on any of these targets is really slim without me being pulled massively out of position. So I'm going to focus on this Jean Bart that is attempting to cap the B-cap. He seems to be turning to the left. I'm just going to put a spread. I'm just going to put a wide spread in front. One of the hallmarks of the British DD line is this incredibly flexible option of single launching torpedoes concentrated into specific areas. He's on fire. We're just going to quickly smoke up here and try and put some damage. Try and keep him angled in. He does seem to be making a slight turn. He gets undetected briefly, and it looks like he's actually found a perfect gap in between those torps. And he does, he escapes. I'm just going to fall back here, because I can see the bulk of the enemy fleet is coming in to the B-cap behind this Jean Bart. And while the Jean Bart remains fully focused here, He's also being talked by our mi friendly Minotaur here in the smoke. I neglected to fire a full spread, so there's one left in the tube. Put that on his bow. And my intention here is to get a flank on this enemy team coming in at the rear of the B-cap. We can see them now. There's a second battleship after entering. There are a couple of cruisers. And that whole fleet that was retreated from sea is all gathering, it would seem, to enter the cap, the B cap. And this is going to present a particular problem. Because while we may have the ship lead and the points lead at the moment, once the cap is flipped it won't remain that way for long. 
The enemy Mino was briefly spotted. I'll attempt to reset him. Due to the relatively slow speed of the daring, when attempting to make flanking moves like this, it's going to take time to get there. And I find it very important to examine the minimap in moments like this and attempt to read the situation. Most of our fleet is not only spread out, but the majority are sitting deep or behind islands, while the enemy fleet is concentrated and all capturing and effectively blocking the B camp. Not only do we have restrictive vision on the enemy fleet's movements at the moment, but we will be forced to kill the enemy team at a faster rate simply to maintain pace with the scoreboard. My goal here is to get vision on the enemy fleet and start cross torping. Uh, our friendly Mino goes down and now we are going to start bleeding points with these two capture points. I see the Jean Bart trying to escape. Quickly open fire. Try and get some fires on him and finish him off. And turn in quickly, right shells. Got a Zhao shooting at me as well. So we're gonna quickly smoke up here, angle inwards. Try and mitigate any incoming shells. And make sure that this Jean Bart doesn't escape. He goes down, I avoid most of the Zhao shells. I can see now that enemy Mino is, gets deleted, which is quite fortunate. Enemy Zhao was moving to my right, so I'm just going to fall quickly back out of the smoke. I do expect that he has torped me. Closest contact is still in the cap. Oh, well, that's quite unfortunate. The spotter plane was in a direct line between myself and the Zhao, and I was briefly spotted. I'm just going to torp out in front of him. He is slowing down, maneuvering. It's quite unfortunate I got spotted by that spotter plane, as it has spooked him. And in hindsight, I should have held off on those torps and just repositioned. He did indeed try to torp my smoke. It's one of the plus sides of the British uh, smoke screens. You're never going to be really sitting in a smoke long enough to eat torpedoes because you will already be on the move again. Just gonna quickly move in. Got a minute and 12 seconds left on my torpedo reload. See the enemy Des Moines. This Des Moines I noticed earlier at the start of the match, he was playing quite deep. So I suspect he's quite inexperienced. But I'm just going to fall back out of his radar range for the moment while my torpedoes keep reloading. Plus I've got this enemy Zhao who is pushing in closer and he is getting quite close to that 6 kilometer mark. So I'm just going to continue to fall back here. I can see the enemy Yamato as a prime target along with the Montana. And I just My goal here is to simply keep these guys all spotted and make manoeuvring for them more difficult. The match is very finely balanced now. It's a 5-on-5 five five situation. It's all about maintaining discipline and being patient. I could smoke up here and start farming damage, but it serves little purpose. It's much better to keep the enemy guessing and nervous with the threat of torps. The majority of the enemy fleet is now bunched up. It's just a matter of time before I can start landing some crucial hits. So while I dropped a focus spread in there, I noticed the Des Moines charging my position so I want to angle away as quickly as possible. I still have another set of torps up, but I just want to be angled away from the Des Moines when this radar comes. He is still moving towards my position. I'm gonna try and drop this set on the Yamato. He does seem to be moving forward. Enemy Des Moines seems to be blissfully unaware of my location and also seems to have totally forgotten about 
the fact he has a radar consumable. These torpedoes are looking spot on on the Montana. It's the great advantage of being able to launch focus spreads, being able to land salvos like this. Montana is crippled down to 8k. Unfortunately, the Yamato has hit the brakes. I'm just going to rotate back around into the same location. The Yamato is reversing there, I can see. Des Moines is pushing into the cap. The Daring truly is a classic example of hybrid destroyer, capable of operating in both role of torpedo boat and gunboat. Being able to operate effectively in either role, depending on the current tactical situation, does demand, as I mentioned earlier, a lot of patience. There is a very fine line between success and failure in the Daring, and the best words of advice I can give to you are to prepare yourself for an adjustment period once you first get to the daring. In the process of getting here, the more forgiving traits of the HMS Lightning and Jutland allow for far more aggressive positioning and playstyle, but the daring's attributes require more temperate aggression and I can't overstate it enough, patience. But is it fun, you may ask? I must admit, the answer is yes. I always tend to gauge my fun factor slash engagement level on the simplest of things really. Do I have the ability to influence the outcome of a battle in my favour? And does this ship give me the tools to do so? These tarps are looking good. Okay, we take out the enemy Des Moines. Let's instantly put fire on the enemy Yamato. I have slightly drifted out my smoke here. I hit the speed button when I didn't really need to. And my aim is not the greatest at the moment. I tried initially to get some shells on his bow. Get a fire there, but I'm better off just going straight for his superstructure. Okay, there's a fire. Just gonna persist for a moment with HE to attempt to get a second one to force him to burn his repair. Just gonna push out, push, get, push a little bit closer. He has repaired that fire. Just gonna persist with HE. Get those fires going, but RNG is not on my side at the moment, and my aim is really off. I'm consistently hitting his front turrets. Just need to adjust here. In hindsight, I should really be using armor piercing here and punishing this guy. But with the fact... Okay, the Zao has gone down. Due to the fact he has burned his repair, I'm... It's a force of habit. I'm trying to get those fires on him that will burn for full duration. And RNG, finally get, I finally get a fire on this guy. I think I'm in serious danger of letting my own stubbornness get the better of me here. I'm really persisting in trying to get this second fire when I should really have switched to AP a long, long time ago. It's about time to change. Start raining AP down on this guy. See immediately the damage numbers making having a real effect on him and I've misjudged my own positioning here and this enemy Yamato is in danger of escaping here now he is attempting to rush our Republic I have no firing angle on him at the moment am I able to lob shells over the island there according to the indicator I can't Oh, I was able to get a fire on him there, which is which is pretty lucky considering the amount of fire I've been putting on him so far. He has immediately repaired that fire, making him extremely vulnerable to HE again. He has a fire on his bow section. So I'm trying to get a f Oh, he has taken out a Republic. 
and he is attempting now to get behind that island desperately trying to get a fire on his midsection which will definitely kill him we are a long way behind on points and we don't have the time need to kill him before he gets in there oh I nearly threw that away at the end so while we quickly look at the results screen I would like to thank you all for watching I really appreciate all the great comments and attempt to respond to them all I hope you enjoyed the video and found some useful information here. If so, make sure to share it with your friends and clanmates. If you want to keep in touch and up to date with all future videos, just follow the on-screen instructions. Until the next time, thank you once again.